Hello and welcome to the Covert Shores Guide to the Ten Types of Submarines. I am H.I. Sutton. Um, I run the Covert Shores website, hisutton.com. I was going to do this as a article on that website, but I thought, why not try a video? This is my first video. It's unscripted. I'm going to keep it quite short and talk about something that I think is very useful information to people. There are different types of submarines, and we tend to classify them as SSN, SSBN, and so on. You hear these terms. They originate in the US Navy um, uh, vessel classifications, but they're actually quite widely used globally. I'm going to approach from the perspective of how they're commonly used, um, and I'm going to only talk about the ones that are most relevant today. Not all of them are actually from the US system. A good starting point, though, is the SSN. These are nuclear-powered attack submarines, or general-purpose submarines, sometimes called. We get to the term SSN by combining SS for submarine with N for nuclear power. SS originally stood for self-propelled submersible, but submarine in modern language. These have a nuclear reactor. That's the defining characteristic, really. And they're also larger and more versatile than most non-nuclear submarines. Only five countries currently operate these. It's very league group, the US, Russia, UK, France, and China. India has operated them until very recently and will again um, when it um, commissions the first of its home-built um, SSNs. Brazil is also working on building an SSN. Large than SSNs are SSBN, so that's another type you hear about. They're one letter difference in terms of designation, and that's for ballistic missiles. So the B stands for ballistic. In practice, this means nuclear armed um, intercontinental ballistic missiles. And these submarines form the continuous at sea deterrent of the countries that operate. Today, all these submarines have a bank of launch tubes behind the sail for the nuclear missiles. Um, the smallest has four launch tubes and the largest has 24, but 12 to 16 is the new normal, really. Um, that's sort of the optimum amount. Only six countries operate these, US, Russia, UK, France, China, and India. India is the newest entrant um, and is prioritizing SSBNs over SSNs, and that's why it operates SSBNs, but not yet SSNs. Another type that you do hear about is the SSGM. This is a little bit more complicated because G stands for guided missile. In practice, that means cruise missiles, but it's not any submarine that carries cruise missiles, rather submarines that are defined, their role is defined by the cruise missiles. Mostly during the Cold War, Russia built a series of submarines designed specifically to attack carrier battle groups with very large cruise missiles. These were the SSGNs. Nowadays, there's, there's been a shift and increasingly it's about land attack cruise missiles. The ultimate SSGN today is the Ohio class. Um, four of these were converted from being SSBNs to SSGNs with the, the ballistic missiles replaced by Tomahawks and they can carry many more Tomahawk cruise missiles. Non-nuclear submarines are simply called SS. These are mostly diesel electric powered. Um, there's a few different flavors of these. You hear terms SSK, SSP. SSK is for a, a version that is capable of anti-submarine warfare. Um, it's an obsolete term in the US system, but it's still widely used. SSP is a more recent term coming um, from America for submarines with air independent power, which is also often written air independent propulsion or AIP. SSI is also used for AIP, but SSP is the main one. Um, these terms are not mutually exclusive because of course submarines can have an anti-submarine capability and be AIP. A good example of that is the Type 212A, which was jointly developed by Germany and Italy. It's anti-submarine capable and it also has AIP. Um, you could call it an SSP, you could call it an SSK. In practice, I've mostly heard it refer to an SSK.
Submarines with ballistic missiles that are not nuclear powered are termed simply as SSB. So they're missing the end for nuclear. Only one country operates those today. That's North Korea. Um, China does have a similar submarine, but that's only for testing. These tend to be much smaller and they therefore can carry fewer missiles. In this case, it's only carrying three ballistic missiles. Very small submarines are called SSMs, um, generally uh, known as mini submarines or midget submarines. Iran and uh, North Korea are the main operators, but there are other countries um, either operating or exploring these. Sometimes it's written that these have to be less than 150 tons to qualify, but I think that that is outdated really. Um, there are many designs that are a bit bigger, maybe 200, 300 tons that are easily described as SSMs. And in fact, there's designs out there 400, 500 tons, um, which in every other respect should be considered as SSMs. Italy is famous for building these. And uh, this is a design that Italy um, the Italian company Cosmos built or, or designed for South Korea. In general, SSMs are not capable of the full range of missions that an SS is, is able to do. However, they are perfectly suited to the missions that they are assigned, which is typically going to be special forces in session. Some of them also carry torpedoes. The special forces themselves would use an SDV. This is a mini sub that is um, tailored to delivering special forces to their to a beach or wherever their mission is. In the US, um, very specifically, they're now called SEAL delivery vehicles, but that's more branding and just a change of one letter. Most of these are wet submarines, meaning that you have to wear diving gear while you're inside the submarine and it's submerged. They're not sealed from the outside in the same way as a regular submarine, so it's wet inside, we call that a wet submarine. There are a few variations. Um, we could do a whole talk on SDVs for sure. Um, one is what I term submersible boats. These are SDVs that combine the characteristics of a high-speed surface vessel, a power boat, with um, the, the underwater characteristics of a wet sub SDV. Um, there's a South Korean example in the upper photo. Another type that's coming into prominence is the DCS or dry combat submersible. These have been around for quite a while, but now the US Navy has a program to um, equip the SEALs with these. And so DCS, the US term is, is starting to become quite common. And the difference with these as name implies is that they're dry on the inside like a regular submarine. However, they're still used for transporting combat swimmers and the, and the special forces, the swimmers have to swim, typically a breathing apparatus from wherever the submarine um, drops them off to their mission. Another unusual type of submarine, this is where we break from the US um, naming convention. An AGS is, I call it a deep nuclear station, is actually more properly the translation of autonomous nuclear deep water station. These are deep diving submarines, nuclear powered. Currently only Russia operates these types of submarine, although in the past, the US Navy's famous NR1 mini sub could be described as, as being the same as this. The most famous is Lasharik, um, therefore conducting seabed warfare, so um, operations on internet cables and wrecks and things like that on the seafloor. The AGS generally does not have the endurance or range to, to sail all the way to, to where it's going to operate, so it gets carried by a mother submarine or host submarine. These are really big, among the biggest submarines in the world. They're only operated by Russia and um, above the surface, they look a bit plain, but what's interesting is underneath the surface where the AGS can dock uh, underneath. Um, we call these S -A -S, sorry, SSANs, this is a little bit of a legacy term. The A stands simply for auxiliary. In the modern terms, these spy subs are only operated by uh, Russia, although the USS Jimmy Carter has some similarities. Lastly, the 10th one I want to cover is the DSRV. This is a deep submersions rescue vehicle. This type of submarine 
um, would be used when another submarine it sinks um, and is still intact. It would go down, connect to the hatcher submarine, and the crew would escape into this, which then lifts the surface and, and, and they're safe. So that's the 10 types of submarine. As I say, some of them are widely used, but I think it's a useful exercise because some of them much less so. None of these designations are perfect. They're rare exceptions. Sometimes the most interesting submarines are exceptions. Um, but I wanted to give a sensible overview um, for people who are not familiar with all the terms. If you like um, in-depth articles on submarines, check out Covert Shores. Please give me feedback. Like I say this is my first video. I've deliberately kept it short and simple. Let me know what you want to hear about. I don't know if I'll be making more videos. We'll see how it goes. Thank you very much.